and share my screen. So tonight we are talking about files. Um, and really files are a form of data storage. When you deal with anything, Microsoft Office, um, a movie program, any of that, you are creating a file. Everything on the computer system, almost everything on the computer system, is a file. Um, and so it is very important to understand how to use this storage. And what we do is just talk about files. So we have some new concepts, and we have some new keywords and functions. So what we're going to be concentrating on with our keywords and functions this week is the open function. And you don't know what a file descriptor is yet, but it gets the file descriptor from the operating system. The close function, which gives that file descriptor back to the operating system. Read, which is basically just get me everything that's in the file. And the with keyword. And with keyword allows you to make it more easy on yourself when you're dealing with file handling. Um, and there aren't a lot of programs that have that functionality built in with the keyword, so Python is pretty nice. So uh, what is a file? Everything's a file. Python interpreter is a file. PyCharm is a file. The you know keynote that I'm using right now is a file. Everything's a file. Um, and even the address book that tells something how to get into memory is a file. Um, and every time you want to interact with a file, you have to interact with the operating system. And now in the days of old, um, when we were programming, we did have to care about the operating system because the uh, uh, Sun Microsystem, which is probably way before you were born, you know, was different than, um, you know, another kind of Unix system, much different than a PC, completely different from Apple. So if I wanted to write a program that wrote a file and read a file, I would at minimum have to have three different comp three or four different compilations and um, I would potentially have to have a different code base. So what Python and languages like Python do is they remove you from being so close to the operating system. And that's a good thing. Okay. All right, so I'm going to keep talking about the operating system for a minute. It, it is very difficult, not difficult, but it is time consuming to have to understand how an operating system functions to be able to use a basic unit uh, uh, on that operating system, which is the file. So what Python has done and Java and a few other languages have done is they have given us a way to no longer care what the operating system is and to be able to normalize things. So if you write a Python program and it runs on Linux, you can use the exact same program and it's going to run on Windows. So that's one of the powers of Python and other languages like Python is that they remove us from the operating system. So what, what can I do with a file? Well, as I've talked about before, CRUD. You can create it, you can read it, you can update it, and you can delete it. If you get those four actions, you've got a lot. You've gone a long way to understanding files. So I think I just said this. OK, operating system, um, yeah, down here. Python provides the ability to use the same Python script to access files, and we don't have to worry about the OS. And it's called write once run many, which means I can run it on lots of different operating systems. Um, every file has properties. So we're going from the operating system now to the file. All files have properties. 
Sometimes it's referred to as metadata. And those properties can be lots of things. Usually those properties are the name, the size, its location on disk. Um, and they're all contained in the file object that is provided by Python, because there's two layers. There's the data in the file, and there's the data about the file. And you have to get at the data about the file before you can get at the data in the file. So why was I just talking about operating systems and talking about CRUD and things like that? Well, I was doing that because what we have to do when we're opening a file is use something called a file descriptor. A file descriptor is that object with all of that metadata in it, all of the name and the size and location on disk, whether somebody else is reading it in, uh, for some operating systems like Windows. All that stuff is in the file descriptor. And that's what Python gives me when I open a file. And this can be an area of confusion for, for new programmers. When you open a file, it doesn't mean that you read the file into memory. When you open a file, you simply get, an, you get access to be able to read the file. You don't get the contents of the file itself. Um, so, when, so when I'm opening a file, um, I can create it, read it, update it. So here I have the, I have my, a name, the name my file. It's on the left hand side of a single equal sign, so it is a variable. That variable is expecting to be the file descriptor, that thing that Python gives us that allows us to get at the data in the file. I have the open function. This is a call to the open function. And it is provided by Python. You don't have to do anything special. And it will give you the file descriptor. Well, what's it going to give you the file descriptor of? What it's going to give you the file descriptor of is, in fact, the name of the file. Now, right now, these are just simple names. They could be fully qualified. They could have a path on the computer, and in fact, a lot of times they will. Um, and then I have what I can do with that file. So I, as the programmer, when I'm programming in Python, get to choose what can happen to that file. And those are called modes. Now, the modes are read, write, append, and binary. We'll get to binary in a little bit. But read means the only thing I can do is read the file. Write means the only thing I can do is write the file. Whether or not there's anything in it, I, can, I will overwrite that if I just put write. A is a pen to the bottom of file, and B is binary. We'll talk about it in a minute. So for the line of code that's here, I have my file equal open, my first file.txt, R. So I'm opening my file.txt for reading. So I'm going to say, you can't change it, you can read it. Now over here on the right hand side of the screen is a little blue box. That blue box basically on the top has metadata, and on the bottom in the solid blue area is, are the contents. So this is my attempt to kind of show you in an encapsulated format what a file is. That there are two pieces of it. There's the descriptor, which is all the stuff about the data, about the file. And then there's the contents of it, the stuff you want to get at. OK, when I am done, after I'm completely done processing my file, I have to remember to close my file. Closing releases that file descriptor back to the operating system. So what's the big deal about that? Well, there are only so many file descriptors on a file system. And if you don't manage your files properly, you're going to eventually run out of file descriptors, and you won't be able to open a file, any file on the system, anywhere. Your system will freeze. So that's why it's important to always do that. Now, a lot of people think, well, but there's there how many millions of file descriptors are there? 
And there are probably a lot, depending on the operating system and the size of your hardware and things like that. However, um, a lot of modern computers, computer programs, use thousands and thousands of files and use other you know, things that use thousands and thousands of files. So it adds up really, really quickly. Um, and so always close your file. Also, if you don't close it and you try and use it at a, in another running program, you're not going to be able to. Okay. If it already exists, an open will open the file. If it doesn't exist, Python will create a new file when using W or R. Um, system resources are finite. Remember to close that file. So I just told us how to get to a descriptor of a file, but I haven't told us how to get to the data inside the file yet. So my file is not the contents. It is simply a, a um, a way to get at the contents. It's an act, it's an accessor. It is a descriptor. It's it's really getting you to that metadata. So how do I get from opening my file to actually getting the data? Well, you read it. That's what you do. You use the read function on the my file object because that's just a file descriptor object. And you set a variable equal to the outcome. And that's how you get the file. Sorry, that's how you get the contents of the file. Now, I put Meister there because everything in a file is a string. Everything that comes into Python from anywhere is considered a string until you tell Python differently. So, excuse me, that's just something to keep in mind. So, read is the function that gets all of the data in the file and puts it into the variable, in this case, Meister. Um, and that can be good and that can be bad, not the putting it into Meister. Um, reading a file in whole, if it's a small file, it's not a problem at all. Reading a file um, that's huge in whole is going to cause a problem. If you're trying to read in gigabytes, it's going to either take a very long time and block up your system depending on how it's written, or it's going to completely um, eat up all the RAM that you've got to run a program and your system will just stop again. So that's why it's important to understand what read does. Read gets every last byte from that file. Um, and this is what it does. It just gives you a string with this is a text slash n with two lines. And then, of course, I close the file. You're going to get sick of hearing me say that. All right. Read data from a file as a list. Well, this is good. This is another way to read it. We're still going to get it um, all, but let's take a look. Um, and what this does, what we're about to look at, is it um, basically does a um, split on a new line. So I have my file equal open my first file dot text r, and I've got my list equal my file dot read lines. Now on the previous slide I had read, and now I have read lines. Read lines is what is going to give me a list already set up that is broken every time, well, there'll be a new element in the list every time there's a new line. Um, and it's, again, it's a function provided by Python. You use it on the my file object, um, and it can only be used with the file descriptor. So what this is going to do is this is just going to give me a list. This is a file with two lines. That's what my list is going to be. And then, of course, you have to close the file. I'm just going to keep saying that for the next 40 minutes. 
Okay, so what if I want to read the file line by line? Well, I can do that as well because maybe I don't need to read the whole file. Maybe I'm looking for something very specific and when I find it, I stop and I close the file. So there are instances where you're just going to want to read the file line by line. Um, so this is where we're going to use um, a loop. And so I'm going to open the file. I've got four line in my file. It's just a for loop with an in statement. We know how to do these. In this case, we're doing it on the file descriptor. And what this does is it defines a variable called line, which is used inside the scope of the for loop. And I'm just going to print the line. And I'm going to get this as a file. I'm going to go back up to the top of the for loop. It's going to say, do I have more information in the file? I do. It's going to print it with two lines, and then I'm going to close. So this is also, this method of read lines is also helpful if you want to do processing line by line by line on a file that, that is not delimited with new lines. So if it's delimited with something else. If there's other things you have to do, then um, this will help. Sorry, then this is, this is what you can do with them. Okay, closing a file. I've said this before. I'm going to become just, just so boring on this this evening. You've got to close the file. There are system resources associated with it. Um, and what the other thing close does is, it writes any changes made to the file. And that's important. We're going to talk about buffering in just a little bit. But understand that when you write something to a file, it doesn't always make it there exactly at the moment that you thought it might. So you have to remember to close the file because that will clean up anything out there that has not actually been written to disk. Now, why am I saying that? Um, why wouldn't our operating system just write it to disk, every single character? Well, that's because writing to a disk is pretty much the most expensive operation you can do in any computer system these days. Um, even the solid state disk, it's an expensive operation. And so what we as programmers have to do is we have to decide when we're going to do that especially if speed is a priority. Um, you know, imagine playing one of the big, massive multiplayer games or something. I'm not really a gamer. Um, and then, you know, all of a sudden things start to slow down because they're doing a file write. That's not going to work. So you have to manage the data in memory and tell the computer or let the computer decide when it's actually going to write those bits into the file. Um, you always have to close the file. So let me see. Yes. Close the file. Got it. Okay, I'll stop doing that, Jesse. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Do I have a read in here? Flush. Read. So um, is that there? ManyLines.txt, yeah. So ManyLines.txt just has line 1, 2, and 3, 4, 3 and 4. So if I execute uh, edit configuration, module 7, what did I just say? Read.py. So if I debug this, actually I just leave the thing there. And I'll I'll take a oh come on. Sorry. Trying to get this bottom panel to come up. It doesn't want to. There we go. Okay. No, that's not what I want. Python console, that's what I want. 
Okay, so I'm going to debug this, and we're just going to stop at the top of the file. So let's look again at mylines.txt. So mylines.txt is in the same directory, so I don't have to worry about any, um, so let me make it bigger. I don't have to worry about any directory listings here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a file descriptor. So I'm going to step over this. And what you'll see in variables is you'll see my file. Now, my file is that you do not see any words from the file here. It says it's a text I.O. wrapper. And what that means is it's file object that's going to give you text. Text in, in I.O. is input output. So that's just a wrapper around the descriptor that says it's expecting text. And if I look into this, I have this buffer, I have closed as faults, encodings, errors, all of this information that is about the file. These are all, this is all information, this is all metadata. How did I open it? What's the name of the file? So when I talk about the file descriptor, I'm talking about all this stuff. You know, even down to the encoding, which is UTF-8, which matters when you're doing file handling. Um, and then there's all these protected attributes. I'm not going to worry about them. So this is what, just by that one open, I got all of this. But I haven't gotten to what I really want yet, which is the data inside the file. So now I'm going to read lines. So there are four lines in mylines.txt. I should have four elements in my list because that's what read lines does. So now I have lines. The list length is four. Now it's interesting here because even though these had new lines and that's how Python was going to split it, Python doesn't remove the new line like split does when we're reading in a string. So we have to remember that that new line will be there. So just that's just kind of a small aside. And then I'm going to print the lines. And when I print the lines, they're just going to be line one, line two, line three, line four. And then I close the file. So when I close the file, what you'll see is, well, it's done. So everything goes away. But the my file buffer would have been closed and it would have just emptied out. Okay, where is that? What time is it? All right. So writing to a file. Remember when I said that we don't always write to a file really quickly, write at immediately? That's because we buffer, and we have to buffer because of the expense of writing. So if I open a file for writing, I'll use the W. Um, the W mode, and between the file and my program, between the disk and my program is a buffer. And that buffer is a place in RAM, and it just holds stuff. It holds data that's supposed to go into the open file until I either explicitly tell it to write or the system tells it to write. Because um, the operating system will say, okay, at such and such a time, flush the buffer. Or when the buffer gets full enough, it flushes itself. So what I have here is I have just four lines of code. I'm opening my empty file. Nothing was in the file. I'm going to write two lines to the file, and then I'm going to close it. That close actually empties the buffer and writes the information into the file before returning the file descriptor descriptor to the operating system. And that's all fine and good. But what if I want to write the file before close? Because this is important sometimes. Sometimes you need to flush that buffer. So I'm going to open my big file. And I'm going to say for counter in range 1,000. And I'm going to my file dot write big file. And I'm going to write big file 1,000 times but, or 100 times, but every time that my counter hits 
a anything divisible by 10, it's going to flush the buffer. And I'm going to do that with the flush function. So it's going to flush it to disk. And so that's all that's going to happen. When I close it, the last uh, buffer will be, um, the last anything in the last buffer will be written to the file. And the file won't exist until, um, yeah, the file won't exist until either the buffer is flushed or you've closed the file. So you may be working with files and not actually see the file on the disk because it's still only in memory. So the with fun the with keyword. So with makes life easier. It just does. Um, just like I said, for loops were meant for list. Well, with is meant for files. And what that does is it encapsulates all of the processing associated with that file in one scope. And that actually, that construct makes it very, very easy to handle files. It just makes it easier. Um, so if I use the with keyword, um, it's automatically going to close the file when the loop is exited. With is, in fact, a loop. The loop will act on the file descriptor of whatever is inside the open function call. So I have with open, and I'm going to open a file, and I'm going to say as, and then I'm going to give it the name of a variable. Could be anything. It is, in this case, it's my file. It is valid only in the local scope of the with statement. So it's only in the stuff that's indented under with will my file be available. Okay, so my file dot read line, I'm going to print the line. So it'll be line one, and then it's going to be line two. And then I'm going to print file closed automatically after exiting with. With indicates a loop. And it's going to process it till it reaches the end of a file unless you tell it not to. Um, with automatically closes the file. So Excuse me, it's very important to remember that with is a loop. Okay, so let's do a little bit of that. Let's go here and let's see, read each line with. Okay, so I still have my lines.txt for writing and I'm going to for reading. Um, and I'm just going to read the lines. I'm going to print it, and then I'm going to for line in FL print line. Okay. So let's see what happens when I run this with generation. All right. I'm just going to debug this. So when I step over with, what happens if I look down here in my variables, I have my IO wrapper as F, because that's the variable I've set it to, not a great variable name. So I have my, my uh, file descriptor in F, so I can do everything I want to any, like I would if I had just said my file equal and then open my file.txt. So I'm going to read all the lines. So there are four lines. And then I'm now going to say four line in FL, because that's what I called the file list. And I'm just going to print each of the lines. So I can have a for loop inside of a with. With automatically closes it when you're done with the with loop. Um, and it just makes it easier. It allows all the files processing to be encapsulated in one place. OK, so a little bit more about op working with the operating system. So Windows, Mac, and Linux are all operating systems. They all treat files a little differently. And Windows and Linux 
and Mac, well, Mac and Linux don't, but Windows and anything that is Linux based treats uh, file paths differently. So a Python script written correctly can run on any operating system. I don't know why that's there. What happened? I don't know what happened. Okay. So um, I don't know what happened. Okay. We're just going to continue here. Uh, okay. All right. So modules, Python modules. And I'll go back to the uh, path and working with the operating system in just a minute. So Python has what they call modules. And a module is just a file. It's just a file with some Python script in it. Now, it could be a little bit of script. It could be a huge, complex bit of script. It could be a single object. It could be you know, a load of functions. But a module is just a Python script. And you can load that module into your script and use all the stuff inside that module. And it's very, very handy. And this week, we're going to use a module called OS. And OS basically stands for operating system. So um, now let's get back to path separators. We had to know about the OS module before we could deal with path separators. So I can deal with path separators because Python gives me this module called OS. You can look up on the internet Python. The Python documentation on the internet is spectacular. And it allows me to deal with the difference between Windows and Linux separators. So first I'm going to import. Import's a new keyword, which basically just says copy all the file into memory space. And the file I want to copy is going to be called os.py, and os is the name of the module. So now what I want to do is I want to say file path os.join home l shannon module 6 lecture.key. And that will write the correct directory either on Linux or Windows. So I have home l shannon module 6. And for Windows, I have the slash the opposite way. So that's what that does. And it really is very powerful because it means I don't have to write a bunch of different code. Binary data. Binary data is what a lot of stuff really is out there. Microsoft Office document is binary. A JPEG image is binary. A lot of Im imagery is binary. So there's lots of binary data. Binary is not human readable. That's why if you just you know, tried to open a Microsoft Office document in the text editor, it would, um, it would just look like gobbledygook. So Python will allow us to read and write files as bytes rather than as strings. Um, so what did they, the B nomenclature, and this looks a little weird, but this is the correct syntax. My bytes equal B before the colon, before the quotes. And that is to say that this is binary data. Nothing else, just binary. It's not really a string. So I can print my bytes, and if I print, I asked it to print the type of my bytes. And type is another um, Python function that you get for just using Python. And it takes a variable, and it will tell you the type of that variable, whether, whether it's bytes, whether it's floats, int, string. Um, so yeah, that's all I wanted to say about that. So CSV files. Why am I talking about CSV files? Because you're going to have a lab with CSV files. So CSV, comma separated value, is just, it's just another way to um, organize your data in a file. A lot of people are um, 
a lot of old people like me, are familiar with CSV files, comma separated values, because they are used for spreadsheets all over the place. Um, underlying Microsoft Excel is a CSV file. Maybe a CSV file and binary, but it's still a CSV file. And this is required for Lab 7.0. So I have a CSV, a comma separated value. So every value is separated by a comma or a new line. And I'm going to create a list of the contents of word.csv, removing any duplicate words as you build the list, which might be something handy to know how to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import a module. The module name is CSV. I'm going to create an empty list. I have to have some place to put this outside of the width loop so that I can look at it later. I'm going to store my data, but I'm going to read it in inside that width loop. So I have to have a place that is external to the local scope of width. So that's going to be word list. Okay, so I'm going to do csv.reader, and reader is a function provided by the CSV module. And it's going to um, basically read the words from the dictionary with a delimiter of comma. So, because you, even though it says comma separated value file, you can change the delimiter if you need to. So now for row in content, in case there are mul multiple lines in the file, and then I'm going to say for row counter in range length of row. Row counter not in word list. If row counter isn't in word list, so I'm just going to append row counter to word list. And I'm going to keep doing this until word list is done. So basically what I've done is I've defined word list because it's going to be used outside the scope of the width. I've opened a file called words.csv. I've run through any possible rows that could be in that file. I have um, removed or not added duplicate words to the word list, and then I've printed it out. What time is it? OK. So we'll go look at comma delimited for just a minute. Comma delimited. Comma delimited. Okay. So this is basically what we've pretty much just seen. There. Okay. Oh, that's not the right one. Comma delimited, comma delimited dot py. Sorry about that. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I'm going to debug this file. I have opened something called comma delimited dot txt commandedlimited.delimited.txt is here. And basically what I have is, I this is just an example where I am not using a comma, I'm using a colon, um, just to show you that it can be something other than a comma. But you'll see these are rows and columns. That's what they are. So it's going to read everything in from the file. And my delimiter is a colon. So if I step over that, I go to variables. I have this CSV file, I have wrapper, which um, is the CSV file. And then I have content. Because I use CSV file reader, it has gotten the content. And that content 
is inside the reader. So I'm going to have to basically use for row in content. So if I do that, I have row is A, B, C, D, E. Okay. So content doesn't look like anything. Content is not a list of strings. Content is um, the, the CSV reader's way of storing the data. And somewhere under here, you'll actually be able to get to the data. But if we simply say for row in content, we will get the first row of content, even though it doesn't look like that would happen because you don't see it in the variable. So I'm just going to print row, and then I'm going to do a four through the row, and if I find, don't, so A, B, C, D, E, and now I'm going to do the next row, and the next row is G, F, H, I, J, K. I'm just going to send this continuing. And eventually, I get a list with all the letters of the alphabet. So that is what a CSV reader does. And it would be good to understand this because you're going to have to do something very similar in your labs. So list to a dictionary um, is also important. And basically, because you're going to have to use it in a lab. So I have the contents of dict.txt, and it contains key value pairs. Um, the key is stored in a different line as the value. For example, the key is the first line, the file, and the value is the second. So let's just look, because I think I have that here. At. So this is what we're looking at when I'm talking about dict.txt. I have Lisa answer 42 amount 3.14. So I have five lines in the file, oh, six lines. Name Lisa answer 42 amount 3.14. I have to turn this into a dictionary. How do I turn this into a dictionary? So what you do is you start by, um, I know this isn't a file, but you start by reading the contents of the file if this were a file. But then you create an empty dictionary, and you're basically saying counter in range length of whatever list you get out of your file. And then I'm going to say for counter plus one less than length content if, it's, so basically what we're doing is we're doing every other one. So if counter plus one is less than the length of the content, so I haven't hit the end, and a, mod, a, a modulo two is zero, which means it's evenly divisible by two, then I'm going to do something. I'm going to say contents of counter not in my, if the contents are not in the dictionary that I've created, then I'm going to add it to a dictionary. And then, so now I have my dictionary with contents and counter, and then basically I'm going to print that information out. That's what the, the last uh, for loop is. So this is how you turn a dictionary, sorry, a list into a dictionary. Now if we take that one further, let me see where this one is. Um, Okay, so this is just that code. Oh, um, so I don't have it showing using uh, dict.txt, but basically you would simply replace this with the file open. And then you would read all the lines, you would do a read lines, and it would be this comma separated list. So that's what you would do in the place of that one line there. And I think I just didn't do that as for expedience, for time's sake. Um, sorry about that. So let's go over the labs. And I understand 
that um, these labs are like projects in themselves and that you have projects that are due on Monday. So I can't remember, Jesse, I'm sorry, uh, but anybody out there who watches this later, um, if you're in my class, concentrate on your project. If you, know, if you can't get your labs done exactly on Monday, I'm not going to count off for that this week. So just have that in mind if you're watching this and you're in my class. So 7.8 is about how to use a comma separated value file. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import the CSV module, just like I did in the example I showed you earlier. I'm going to let somebody give me the input for the file name. I am creating an empty word list. If this looks similar, that's because it's very similar. So now I'm going to do a CSV file open, file name for reading. And then while there are more lines to read in the file. Now the little bubble up here basically says this is these two lines, you want to use a with statement. So because this is pseudocode, I'm not going to use the with keyword, but understand that that's what those two lines in the pseudocode mean. Okay, so I'm going to set a variable called user file um, equal to the results of the CSV reader function call. Then I'm going to say for row and user file, and then for index, in len of row, I'm going to say if the value of row at index is not in word list, then output the value of the word of yeah of the row and append the value to word list. So that was 7.8. That's pretty straightforward. 7.9 is is not as straightforward. 7.9 is a large lab to do. Um, so first somebody's going to input a file name and then we're going to set user file to the open file and we're going to create an output list um, for the lines in user file. So basically what we're doing is we're reading files. We're going to eventually have a list called output list and that's going to contain the information in the file. Now we're going to have to turn this list into a dictionary. We saw how to do that earlier. We create a dictionary, empty dictionary outside of any kind of for loop. And then in this case we want another variable called show list and another variable called show list split because we're going to be modifying the data in a couple different ways. Um, starting from the first item in list at every other item in list is a key value pair. So we just learned how to do that. We just went through that in that script. Um, so that's what we're going to do here. So basically what we're doing is we're for, length, for index and length of output list. So we've got this list up here that was created by reading the file, reading all the lines in for a file, which could definitely be read lines. Um, and then we're going to just create a temporary list inside the local scope of the for loop because we just want to have a place to work with stuff that's not going to matter. Okay, so set list underscore object equal to the output list at index where the new line has been removed. And then if index plus one is less than the length of output list and index modulo two is equivalent to zero, we're going to convert the list object to an integer. And then if the list object is in the dictionary, remove new line from the output and append it. Else remove new line from the output, append it and set it um, and, and basically append an item to my dict with the list object to temp list. Okay, now we got to sort things. So we have to sort by keys. And um, so basically we're going to set sorted underscore my underscore dict to my underscore dict. 
and then we're going to sort it by keys. We're going to now set another variable. Um, and then we're going to change from a dictionary to a list. We just had a list, but that's what they want you to do. So we're going to have to then go back through the dictionary and create a list. And then we're going to um, split the list into a single list and then sort um, the list and the output. And then you're going to write the stuff. So the first thing is, is we're going to open output keys.txt for writing. And we're going to say for key, comma, value in my dict of sorted keys. I'm going to convert the key to a string. Then I'm going to write key plus colon to F. And then I'm going to basically say for item in range, for item in value, colon minus one, which just means go to the end. I'm going to write the item plus semicolon to the file, write value minus one to the file, and then write new line to the file. And then I'm going to close the file. And then I'm going to create another one with the show list split, and I'm going to write those items to a file. This is a complex lab. Take it slow and start slow. So if I go to here, the first thing I would do is I would make sure that I can convert the list that's coming in to a dictionary. We saw that how to do that a little earlier. And once I have been able to convert it to a dictionary, I can then add in the stuff to say, is it unique or not unique? And then I can do the sort. And there's kind of a reason why these are on three different slides. The second thing I would do is worry about the sort. I would go and I would look at sorted, S-O-R-T-E-D, for sorting lists. And, um, and uh, you will use that twice. So this is the second part. This is about all the sorting. And then after I've done all that, even though Zybooks is going to give you um, error messages, it's okay that it didn't complete. What you want is each individual section of code. And then as the third part, I would go and I would write the code to the file. So I would split it up like this. So Jesse, are there any questions I can answer tonight? Okay. You have a very good evening. I will try and have this up tomorrow. Um, probably try and do it um, around lunch. So I am going to end the recording.